When teaching gas heating, I find a common thread that students struggle with understanding the heat exchanger. So what I've done here is brought out a whole list of heat exchangers that we can go through and talk about to help better understand how they work. Now a heat exchanger for gas heating is, is, is described as exchanging the heat from the flames and the combustion gases to the air in the house while also keeping the flames and combustion gases completely separate from the air in the houses. One of the heat exchangers that I do not have here is a cast iron heat exchanger and I am so glad that I do not have one of those and I hope I never see one again. They were so horribly heavy having to take them out of basements, out of closets, and sometimes even out of attics. They were an absolute nightmare. But after the cast iron heat exchanger came these. And these were more workable because they were a type of stamped steel. Now if you notice this heat exchanger, we have all these little grooves inside of here. The idea was that the bottom would be our combustion chamber where flames burn. Then we make the flames move, or not the flames, but the gases themselves move and they get smaller and smaller in these chambers. This goes back to the second law of thermodynamics. We want as much of the hot gases touching as much of metal as possible. Then on the outside of this heat exchanger is where the air is running. So the heat exchanger is keeping the flames and hot gases separate while also exchanging the heat through this metal to the air in the house. So on this side of the heat exchanger, have it cut open. So the flames and the burners would be here burning up and then all of this was still gonna be hot gases. All the hot gases collect at the top and it naturally drafts out. So this is a natural draft heat exchanger. One of the things we look for is rust. There's a significant amount of rust in this heat exchanger. Now, if we end up getting a hole in here, even a pinhole, even a hairline fracture, we can have carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide and those gases leaking into the house. So if this heat exchanger fails, it's going to allow those combustion gases to leak into the house. And the biggest one we're concerned about with is carbon monoxide. I recommend a low level CO monitor, not an alarm for any house as gas combustion appliances. So these old heat exchangers were notorious for leaking. We can see here some very heavy rust spots and I'm sure if we were to do a water test, we'd find out that this heat exchanger was leaking. It's also very common for the evaporator coil that sat on top to leak moisture down on this and they would rust out. And just they simply rust out over time. Nothing lasts forever. But this is one of the older styles, natural draft furnace, natural draft heat exchanger. Next we came out, this is out of a package unit, an induce fan style heat exchanger. And with this type of heat exchanger here, it was installed, this particular one, in a package unit. So there would be an inducer fan motor. There would be an inducer fan motor here pulling a draft through the heat exchanger and then forcing the combustion gases outside. So what's really unique about this, this is a two burner heat exchanger, but we had our combustion chamber burning in right here and it pulled the gases down through this little collection box at the bottom. From there we pulled the collection box we pull those gases through this collection box again through this secondary pipe. And what happens if you see this pipe has all these grooves in it. The idea was that these hot gases were actually putting through second law of thermodynamics more metal, more surface area. So we can get more heat out of this appliance. Now notoriously these tube style heat exchangers would fail, especially right here at these end tubes. Now the main cause of that was over firing. Somebody wouldn't have the gas pressure set correctly and the flame would actually burn against the end and it would cause them to burn out. On package units, they were much more likely to fail because of the weather. So the package unit was exposed to outside moisture and air and it caused a significant amount of rust. And in this particular model, you can see a large amount of rust here. Also on this, we see there's a lot of soot. The soot was actually caused from improper gas pressure. It wasn't having the correct air fuel mixture and it actually sooted up all the way inside this heat exchanger. Also I want to point out these rust spots here. These rust spots are an important thing we want to look for. A little spot of rust like this can create a hole in the heat exchanger. This was most likely leaking combustion gases and carbon monoxide into the building. The seams where these pipes were put together is also another place these are notorious for leaking. So there's a few ways you can check this. You could put a camera, um, an indioscope, and run an indioscope inside of here at the light and check it from the inside. The other thing is we can or we can look at these heat exchangers and on package units, they usually had a panel right here. You could take that panel out and physically look at this and see it. This heat exchanger was completely dead, had holes in it, and definitely was a good thing that this was replaced and pulled out of service. Something like this could be very dangerous, but its job again is to separate 
the heat and combustion gas, the flames and combustion gases from the air of the building, while also exchanging the heat from the flames and the gases to the air in the building. So it keeps them completely separate. Many residential units also use tubes like this, even though they weren't quite so long, they still use tubes in the same exact style. Next, we have a camshell style heat exchanger. And these are really popular because they were easy to manufacture. We have multiple burners through this heat exchanger and then we had a collection box at the top and this would be our inducer fan motor. So pull the draft through just like the previous one. And it really is essentially tubes like the previous one. The difference is they stamp this metal together for faster production. And it has some benefits. For one, we don't have to worry about that welded seam. We have our combustion chamber at the bottom and we still pull our hot gases through. We still want to check for cracks in this heat exchanger, especially over firing at this point right here. And any one of these little grooves in here or where it's stamped together was notorious for leaking. Heat exchanger that was well maintained, had a proper combustion analysis in its life, was going to last a lot longer. But this is a little different style heat exchanger. It still worked the same basic way. Uh, this was from an 80% gas furnace. We see there's a little bit of rust right here. I don't see any visible holes in this, but I need to really run a camera through each of these tubes to really check this out. Another thing we would do is pull the blower and we'd look in from underneath to check the condition of this heat exchanger. And the evaporator coil that sat on top is notorious for leaking water. So again, the heat exchanger, on the outside of this panel, we had all of our combustion area. The actual flames would burn inside of the heat exchanger, but the heat exchanger kept the flames separate from the air in the house. This is a, this is also an 80% gas furnace heat exchanger. That's a different brand from a different manufacturer. Still works the same way. In the very bottom is where we would have our in-shot burners throwing our flame sideways. Inducer fan motor at the top, pulling the draft through. Our combustion chamber is here. Our hot gases collect in this little collector box. And then from there we ran our tubes in a lot smaller and more quantity of these tubes. The idea is the air has to go and travel between all of these tubes so we get the majority of the heat or as much heat as we can out of this heat exchanger. So uh, there's a lot of different preferences between people liking this style furnace and this style furnace for the heat exchanger, but the engineers and manufacturers have all gone through tests and decided what works best for them. As far as which one you prefer, there will always and forever be an ongoing argument over brands. But this is a typical 80% efficiency gas furnace. Now we have my favorite type of gas furnace, which is a 90 plus condensing furnace. So in this furnace, our flames are actually burning into the very top side. This is my combustion chamber section. Then we pull the gases down. We have all these little rivets in here or divots in here. These are allowed us to make more surface area. But this is the beautiful part. We get down to the secondary heat exchanger. And the secondary heat exchanger is made of really nice stainless steel and looks very similar to an evaporator coil. So as we pull all the heat out of these hot gases, we then separate it into this collection box and we have these little bitty tubes running across. These little bitty tubes transfer heat even more efficiently. And then we have these fins on top of here. So there's a lot of metal touching a lot of the gases. And on the outside is a lot of air touching a lot of the metal. In the secondary heat exchanger, we have condensing going on. It's changing state from a vapor to a liquid. As we're changing state from a vapor to a liquid, that's 970 B2, the extra heat that's rejected. So that's even more heat we're getting into the house. So because it's condensing in here, that's why this is made of stainless steel. And our collection box here is also made of a plastic and our inducer fan motor is plastic as well to be able to account for the water. And we also have drains on this. So we're gonna have to drain the system even in the summertime. But this is our 90 plus high efficiency condensing gas furnace, all the way up to 98% efficiency nowadays. My favorite style. Now, just because it's my favorite style doesn't mean they don't have problems. If they're not maintained and installed properly, you're gonna have a significant amount of problems. And no matter what's manufactured by man, anything can fail. There are a few more types of heat exchanger. One is the type used in manufactured homes. It's just a giant barrel. I don't have one of those with me because they're hard to come by, but those are quite unique in themselves. And also the same style is similar for 
oil furnaces. It's just a large giant chamber like a barrel and I don't have those. As soon as I get one, we'll make a video for you.